1967 was a big year. The Beatles gave us Sgt. Peppers. This car was roaming the streets. This guy beat my beloved Celtics to go on to win the NBA Finals. A brand new artist named Jimi Hendrix hit the scene and we were given a brand new guitar effect, the effect of octave fuzz. And on today's episode, I'm gonna give you all the information you need to know to decide if that's an effect you want in your rig and I'll even help you pick out the one that best suits you. Got a few new things in the mail, so I'm gonna show those to you real quick. Uh, a while back, Andy Timmons gave me this GNI Octave Fuzz, and it blew me away. It's one of my favorite newer ones made. So I went over and I met them in LA, and he just mailed me a couple new pedals, and here they are. There is a tap tempo delay, this guy, and we also have the hot drive. So this is like their overdrive distortion. So really cool, these just came in. So what I'm gonna do, because this is an Octave Fuzz episode, I'm gonna hook up the Octave Fuzz, put some of this analog delay after it, and give you your first taste of uh, Octave Fuzz on the episode. Here we go. Before we get started, here are some ground rules and they're super simple. I'm playing a Gibson SG into a clean Fender style amplifier. Any dirt you hear is coming from the fuzz pedal. So that lets you compare them and understand, hey, same guitar, same amp. I'm really hearing the differences and that'll let you choose which one you like. I need to give you a warning also that when I plug into an octave fuzz, I go one direction. It's Acid Blues Riff Rock, and I'm gonna riff rock your brains out today. I'm just asking for forgiveness ahead of time. One thing I wanna make really clear is that you can take an octave pedal and you can take a fuzz, play them together, and you have octave fuzz. But that's not really what I'm here to talk about today. I'm here to talk about a specific effect that was invented in 1967. I believe it was invented by two people at the same time, a guy named Jim Morris and a guy named Roger Mayer of Jimi Hendrix fame. I think those guys both stumbled onto something and what they did was they created a very unique fuzz that folded over the waveform and created a high pitch octave above the fuzz and the natural guitar sound. It's a beautiful, crazy, unpredictable, and I would say magical sound. It's not for the faint of heart. It's something that is in an instrument in itself. You have to play to it, you have to feel it. And uh, I just wanna make that clarification. You can put your octave with your fuzz, but it's not an octave fuzz. Going through the history of octave fuzz is quite daunting, but I'm excited to try. And I'm gonna start in 1967 with Roger Mayer because he's of Hendrix fame and it's most easy to imagine and associate the story. So what we have is a young guy, he invents an octave fuzz and he meets Jimi Hendrix at the Bag of Nails in Soho, London uh, in 1967. And he hands him an octave fuzz prototype Hendrix plays it, runs back to the studio, and records the solos for Purple Haze and Fire. And that kind of started something crazy. Roger Mayer becomes Hendrix's guitar tech, and there's a lot of mystery around this. He would take old fuzz faces, gut them out, put his circuits in. They would get stolen from stages. It's a wild story. I'm actually putting a link in the description below. You can read his claims to the invention of the Octavia. Uh, Hendrix actually called it Octavio. Then people called it Octavia, and then a company called Tycobra from California put out a later version here. This is probably 1970, 1969, the Octavia. A lot of people have seen this. I have the wooden box. We have a warranty card. I doubt they'll honor that. A sticker, that'd probably kill you if you touch the glue. And then a manual, which is really fun. And uh, here's the pedal. It's this guy. Really famous, really well known, and what I have that most closely links to Hendrix um, and kind of cuts through some of the mystery. Fantastic pedal. <laughs> Thank you. 
There are a few things that get you that exact sound, if not better, and here are two of my favorites. The full tone octave fuzz. You've probably seen this guy, maybe you didn't realize what it was based on. He put a cool toggle switch on there that lets you uh, deactivate the octave settings. So you have a normal fuzz and then the octave fuzz. In 1968, we are introduced to the Super Fuzz. This is a fuzz that's been used by everyone from Pete Townsend to the Beastie Boys, but it came originally in a very strange form. It was a head unit called the Psychedelic Machine. Uh, originally, it was by a company named Honey. Honey lasted for a little bit and was bought by a company named Shinai. Some of you guys have heard of the Shinai Companion Fuzz, but basically, there's a fuzz in here. You have a rotary. And the rotary goes between univibe, tremolo, fuzz, all that stuff. And the fuzz is a super fuzz. So it's a really cool unit, sounds amazing. And uh, there are pedal forms. So you have a Shinai FY6, I believe it's called. I don't have that, but next up would be a 1970 Univox super fuzz. You've probably seen this. This isn't a wah treadle. It's actually just a giant, ridiculous foot switch that looks awesome. Kind of like a toy. Got two controls here. 1973, the enclosures moved to red. I've seen plenty of pictures of the Who playing in this on the stage. A little better condition. Really great sound. Then you have the Ibanez Standard Fuzz is pretty much a part for part copy of that. And they gave you some sweet sliders. I love the function. And there's a toggle switch on the other ones. They put it on a foot switch here. And I've got some more versions. This is a Shinai. Uh, rebranded Sokova. They build pedals for all kinds of people and put the labels on there. I think the Super Fuzz was made for at least 25 to 30 other companies with all kinds of brand names on the badges. This one, Sokova, Alternato Fuzz. Uh, you had to use a remote foot switch to activate it. Pretty wild, but essentially the same circuit. And a really good modern take of this that you can buy uh, really accessible and really affordable is the Earthquaker Devices Fuzz Master General. So check that out as well. Another octave fuzz from 1968 is the four knob fender blender. This thing has hints of the Octavia and the super fuzz. It's really cool. Its most notable users are Robin Trower and George Harrison. It was kind of revived in the 90s when My Bloody Valentine used it and the Smashing Pumpkins. Beware of a three knob version because it's horrible. Buy the four knob, it's awesome. to 1969, we have the Ampeg Scrambler. Now, Ampeg in 1968 had put out the SVT amplifier, was a huge success, but this, not so much. They made around 2,000 of them. They didn't really sell. It wasn't respected. It kind of got eaten up by all the prior other cool fuzzes that were out there. And uh, yeah, kind of a sad story. It was respected later on, like a lot of great things. There's a band called Cactus. Check out a song called Evil, and you get to hear this in full action. It's kind of like Led Zeppelin meets Hendrix. Pretty amazing. And a fun nerd fact, this is one of the first pedals ever to have the circuit board epoxied, or gooped, as we call in the pedal industry. <laughs> Staying in 1969, I want to show you an effect that the 
pedal industry owes a great debt and more than that the designer that effect the Dan Armstrong Green Ringer these are not pedals you plug them right into the guitar I'm gonna do an episode on them at some point but the point is this guy blazed the way for so many great designs this is so simple no controls and on and off switch and like I said you plug it right in but the circuit inside is really great it's unique to the others it's simple and uh, there's a lot of really cool later versions of pedals that came from this. A few of those variants that came from the Green Ringer are the Love Pedal Believe. I put some controls on this, don't ask, but very similar kind of thing. It's using the Green Ringer with another fuzz pedal. Uh, this is a new favorite, came out not long ago. The Purple Platypus, it's like the reissue, I believe. And uh, it's cool. It has the Red Llama, the old classic Way Huge, inside of it. And what that allows is you have the Green Ringer Octave Fuzz alongside like a lighter gain overdrive ability. The Red Llama goes really heavy but it also goes lighter. So you can do some things where you almost feel like you're playing a ring modulator or a light broken up octave fuzz, and that's unique. One more from 1969, it is the K Fuzz Tone. This is Literally made with what seems to be the plastic from a toy factory. It has a treadle, um, an on and off switch, and uh, the treadle controls the fuzz level, which also controls the perceived octave effect. Uh, you can just peel the back off, you know, like this. And there's the schematic, really simple, really fragile, but really cool. You've heard this on U2's Elevation. gave us a couple of very amazing things. First off, Kid Rock was born. That's worth mentioning. And the Fox Tone Machine was invented by a 19-year-old guy in his garage. It's covered with a strange, fuzzy material. It has an odor. I'm not saying it's unpleasant. It's not pleasant, but it's there. But it sounds amazing. Three knobs and a toggle switch. It's classic, it's on so many recordings and so many pedals came after this that were inspired by this circuit. My favorite variations of the Fox Tone Machine are the Dan Electro French Toast. Ironically, that 19-year-old guy grew up and bought Dan Electro and reissued all the pedals that we know. So, in a way, this is the most official re-release or replica. Yeah, it's a great pedal, really affordable. There is the Joyo Voodoo Octave. I think it sounds good. Haters are gonna hate. It has a couple parts that are backwards. I'm not sure how that happens in the assembly process, but it works and for the money, you know, maybe you wanna try it out. Full Tone did the ultimate octave. Anything Mike Fuller does sounds great, built like a tank. Can't recommend his stuff enough. And then there is the 
Prescription Electronics Experience Octave. If you're fortunate enough to have one of these or you can find one, it's top notch. Out of all the stuff shown today, this is up there. This is A++ material. You have the fuzz on and off. You can remove the octave, so you have a normal fuzz and then the octave up fuzz. And then a swell feature, which is kind of like a boss slow gear swell in on the attack of the note. Yeah, it's a great, great pedal. It's 1974 and a fairly new company called MXR releases two new pedals. One is the Dynacomp compressor and the other is the blue box distortion fuzz. I put this in here even though it's slightly different. It doesn't focus so much on the high end octave as most everything else I'm showing today, but it has to be here. It's a sub octave fuzz. It has a lot of texture and harmonic in there and uh, Jimmy Page made it famous but it's really cool and you should try one. Lastly, I want to show a couple newer ones that I feel are really unique. This is the Stomp Audio Labs Octopus. I've showed this on a previous episode, but it has upper and lower. I'm not really sure what's going on with the circuit, but it's really fantastic. And then last but not least is the Pro Analog Ascension. Now, Scotty says this is a bridge between vintage and modern and very tweakable. And I would have to say, having played all these and spent a lot of time here prepping this episode, this is really, really across the board. I feel like I could pull off a lot of these sounds from most any octave fuzz with this one pedal. So it's one that uh, I'm gonna play for you and you should check it out. Today's record time is brought to you by not one record, not three records, but two records. Jimi Hendrix, Are You Experienced? and Led Zeppelin, Into the Outdoor. So let's start with Are You Experienced? Some of you guys were there and you put the needle down on side one, track one, Purple Haze came on and you were some of the first people in the history of ever to hear Octave Fuzz. I congratulate you and I wanna know all about that in the comments. And then there's In Through the Outdoor. A uh, track called Fool in the Rain. Jimmy uses the MXR Blue Box, which is the octave down kind of weird thing. Fantastic track, great record. If you haven't heard these, please join the club. And if you have, put them back on and just remember the good old days. In the comments below, I want to know about your favorite track ever with octave fuzz on it, because maybe I don't know about it and I need to. Either way, check these out. That's all for this episode. If you liked it, please hit like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon for notifications of future episodes. I wanna give a massive shout out and a thank you to Scotty over at Pro Analog Devices. He's super helpful. He was playing these octave fuzzes before I was a glimmer in my parents' eye, and um, he helped me dig through some of this history, so go check his stuff out. I talk about him all the time, but go right now. Go to the website, buy some pedals. You'll love them. And until next time, have a wonderful day.